What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin, you're watching No Limits On channel from Russia with Love and today we're going to find out should you buy M1 MacBook Air right now, which I can officially call the best MacBook bang for buck. After a ton of research that I did, which you can have a look at in the YouTube card and down in the description below. Or should you go ahead and upgrade to M1 Pro base 14 inch MacBook Pro for $2000 or wait till the release of a redesigned M2 MacBook Air? So let's find out. So guys, first of all, I do recommend to buy M1 MacBook Air in stock configuration for $1000 or maybe even less, because it's the best bang for a buck. If you'll be adding something like 16 gigs of RAM, 8 core GPU and 512 gigs of storage, you'll end up at $1450, which is really close to the base MacBook Pro 14 inch with M1 Pro chip. And let me show you and explain you why in this case, if you upgrade your M1 MacBook Air, it makes more sense to upgrade to M1 Pro 14 inch. So what do we get for additional $550 if we upgrade to 14 inch MacBook Pro base configuration? We'll have much better screen with p3 color deeper blacks and 120 hertz pro motion and it's a little bigger once again second we'll get a lot better speakers Ten eighty P camera versus seven twenty P on the MacBook Air. Studio quality microphone which I'm recording my voiceover right now so you can hear the quality of this microphone right here. You'll get faster SSDs, which is good for your swap memory usage if you run out of RAM. You'll have dedicated ProRes encoders, which are much faster for ProRes export time and a little smoother workflow. You'll have additional ports, three faster Thunderbolt ports, more external display support, MagSafe, SD card reader, HDMI, and you will absolutely have to buy a dongle for your MacBook Air because it only has two Thunderbolt ports and it will be from $50 to $100 easily. Also you'll have bigger trackpads and the full size function key row, the cooling system fans for less throttle and performance under heavy loads and overall better and faster performance especially in video memory related apps. So now let's add $50 to M1 MacBook Air I've talked above which is $1450 and we'll add those two $50 advantages and you'll get $2000 MacBook Pro 14 base model. So to me it makes total sense. MacBook Air M1 has some advantages over the 14 inch. It's always silent, so no fans at all. It's smaller, it's lighter, it's more compact, and it has no notch, by the way. And that's it. So now let's have a look at the comparison of those two models, both are base models for $1000 and $2000 respectively in different productivity apps and professional programs. So guys, you see the results right here and I'm gonna tell you the percentage difference between those two machines. So in Logic Pro we have 30% better performance on the 14 inch, in Xcode the difference is 32%, in Lightroom we have a bit smoother editing performance and 62% faster export time. In ProRes, because of the encoders, we have 4 times faster performance on the M1 Pro. But if you work in Final Cut Pro 10 with 4K H.264 footage and you export to H.264, the difference is only 6%. So it doesn't really make sense to upgrade to M1 Pro for this kind of task. And in 3D graphics, Blender Potty Talk test, we have 90% difference. I also did a comparison of M1 MacBook Air with my wife's M1 Pro 16 inch base model for $2500 in different camera codecs and resolutions, and here are the results. Thank you. 
you saw the results, so now you have a better understanding which machine is more suitable for you. But also there are a lot of leaks and rumors about the M2 chip and M2 redesigned MacBook Air, which is going to have 9 or 10 GPU cores, according to Mark Gurman from Bloomberg. Also it will have 8 cores CPU, 4 efficiency cores and 4 high performance cores, but it will be still slower than the M1 Pro. It will be most likely built on 5 nanometer third generation process or N4P and probably even built on ARM V9 architecture instead of ARM V8 in current M1 lineup. And according to MaxTech research, I'll leave a link down below to that video, we should expect from 15 to 25% performance boost compared to M1 in terms of CPU performance and around 30% boost in terms of GPU performance. According to Mark Gurman, the M2 MacBook Air will be sold alongside the current M1 MacBook Air, so it will 100% be more expensive than the current MacBook Air. I assume $1300 for the base model. There is also a controversial information about mini LED display. Some say that it will have the mini LED display technology, but some say that it won't have it. It almost 100% have a total redesign with probably white bezels and different color options and white keyboard. And I'm almost sure that the base M2 MacBook Air will come with only 8 gigs of unified memory and 256 gigs of SSD. And also, all the rumors point to the third quarter of 2020. 22, so it will be October or November. So guys, to wrap things up, I would say go for the M1 MacBook Air base model for $1000 if you need a computer right now and you are okay with those specs. If you want to spend more and right now, go ahead for the M1 Pro MacBook Pro 14 inch base model, it's a great little machine. And if you are into the redesign and you don't need a computer right now and you can wait till the M2 MacBook Air probably I would suggest waiting for that model. Hope I did answer your questions and if you did find this video helpful, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons as I say in my videos and hit the notifications bell as well. My name is Oleg Nikitin from Russia with Love, no limits on channel and I see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.